Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I'm going to be talking about my first project from my Wooly Thistle Deluxe Selection Box, which was a birthday gift to myself. Um, the Wooly Thistles. Little tote bag that came. Um, so if, uh, if you watch the Wooly Thistles channel, you definitely know about the selection boxes. But a selection box is like something that, um, it's definitely a, a thing in the UK where it usually is like chocolate or something and you get a box of like Cadbury selection box would be like a big box of all these full size Cadbury bars and you just sample like one of each, but it's a full size bar and it's like a thing for Christmas. It's a, it's a big thing there. Um, and so the selection box from the Wooly, Wooly Thistle, um, this is the second year that they've done that. Um, they have like, last year they had three sizes and it was like the base one, it's like the base model. And then there was another tier, excuse me, of the tier, like tier two had a few more things. And then the deluxe one tier three had a few more things. And I thought that was really smart that they had multiple price points. Um, so last year I got the smallest one because I was living in this really small room as a nanny and um, I didn't really have the room for all that yarn. And I was knitting so many projects and I was getting my channel kind of going. And so I just, you know, I kept it at the smaller one, but this year I got the deluxe one. So Black Friday is really close to my birthday, which is the, uh, in November. And, um, and I use this app called Acorns, which rounds up your spare change from your credit card transactions and then it invests it um, and you get more money usually. Um, and I, if the market is good. And I also think it, I have like, you can put like deposits on like X amount of money per week. Um, and again, this is like an app. And so like, I wouldn't like do this for my 401k or I have a 403b because I work in a nonprofit higher ed um, situation. Um, but like I put my credit cards transactions in there and I think it's like $5 a week that I add. And then at the end of the year, I have like, I don't know, 500 bucks. And I just take whatever money I want out of that. And I buy myself a birthday present. Um, and it's basically free money, <laughs> but it's not like it's rounds up my credit card transactions and it's, uh, which is great. And if it's right on a dollar, it rounds up a dollar. Um, and then uh, it's like my $5 a week. And so it's just like this account that does that for me automatically without me having to think about it. And then I have this like extra spending money at the end of the year um, that I hardly have to think about at all. So um, I got the deluxe selection box this year because I was like so stoked about it. Um, also, I'm wearing my cartography sweater by Tin Can Knits. Um, this is knit in Briggs and Little Sport. Um, Lichen and Lace Rustic Sport is the same base as Briggs and Little Sport. So that's if you're looking for it, um, you can get that. But it's really uh, inexpensive. <laughs> and uh, Cartography is from Strange Brew from Tin Can Knits. And it's actually knit in DK weight. So I had to adjust it to make it in um, a fingering weight yarn. Although the gauge was a little loose. It's basically just a quite an oversized sweater. Um, also, I didn't count properly and there's like a little mistake there and it doesn't quite, this this butterfly stripe doesn't quite um, hit in the back. Um, but yeah, I thought, I think it's really whimsical and I really like it. Um, I didn't have it with me last year and I'm sad. I also made one of these for my friend's uh, little like two-year-old who's now, maybe she was one when I made it. Um, she's older than that now. Um, she probably can't wear it anymore, but she, my friend really liked the sweater and I was like, I don't have enough to make you one any more yarn and like to make you one, but I have enough to make your little kid one. So I did. Um, super cute. Um, so yeah, I love this sweater. Um, Briggs and Little Sport or again, Lichen and Lace Rustic Sport. Uh, it's, it, it's not, um, super soft for next to skin wear. Um, but I would say that, um, if you can wear a shirt underneath it, um, I will wearing a t-shirt cause this doesn't bother me, but it could, and I get it. It's a single ply yarn. It's, um, yeah, it's like a sport slash uh, fingering and it's it's really high yardage it's a very generous yardage and again if you get Briggs and Little Sport um, I'm gonna link Maritime Family Fibers below which is the U.S. Uh, distributor of Briggs and Little it's like I don't know 650 for a humongous skein maybe it's more than that in Canada it's like 650 which is like U.S. five dollars so it's it's a good deal um, I think I have a skein of it down here oops sorry um, yeah couple so this is like a charcoal this is a heather it's called medium gray little sport there it is one ply it is one ply so you know it wouldn't make 
People say they make socks with it because there's also a DuraSport, which has nylon. And so some I've had the viewers tell me that they can make socks with it and use Briggs and Little DuraSport for the heels and toes. Um, and also if you throw it in the washing machine for a little bit, it felts a little. So this one is not heathered, it's called Rose. I have a sweater quantity of the Rose. I'm not sure what I'm gonna make, but probably like a yoke sweater. Um, so yeah, my Briggs and Little cubby is way down at the bottom. Um, I don't know what my reasoning for that, for the like layers are, but I guess the closer to the bottom, the less, less expensive the yarn should be in case like the washing machine floods or something. I don't. I don't think I even thought about that. I don't expect the washing machine to flood the basement. Um, but I guess it could happen. Yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, okay, I haven't even shown you what I'm doing, uh, what I'm making, but, and it's been almost six minutes, but I've told you about my sweater, so that's good. Okay, so the selection box um, is great, and uh, it's really exciting to get it, and like they pick all the colors, and I was like, oh my god! Um, and I was like, I need to buy a sweater quantity of all of this instantly. And I'm like, no, enjoy it, make hats <laughs> or cowls, whatever. So I, I'm gonna make a lot of hats. I haven't made hats in a while. So the first thing that I'm knitting with is the Rama Fennel Garn, which I have used before many times. And this is a Rama Plum Mohair. And it, it's supposed to be like, they're, you know, they're the same family and they're basically, it's the same color. This is just dyed on gray and this is dyed on a white mohair. Um, this is actually mohair and polyamide um, instead of silk. I don't notice the difference. It's still got the mohair halo. It's uh, It basically looks and feels exactly like a mohair silk, if you were wondering. This color, I don't know what color it is. Um, I'll look it up and put it down in the show notes, but it's like the gold color. I have seen this <laughs> in pictures. I have never seen it in person until I got this color and I was so excited. I was like, that is the nicest color. I think Kareen made one of her vanilla sweaters in this gold, and it is stunning. It's like gold on, or yellow on, on a gray base, and it's just like this gold brown. Oh my gosh. I would knit a sweater and wear this sweater. Like, I don't wear a lot of this color, but I would wear that. So, the selection box comes with a card that has um, suggestions for patterns. And usually with the sock bag, it was like one free and one paid for. And I think it was the same situation for this one. It didn't say which one was free and which one wasn't, but I think usually they give you two suggestions and usually one is free, which is I think is really cool. It's just that they do that. So I'm knitting with this, the Minted Hat by Andrea Mowry, which was the one of the suggestions. This pattern is for sale. Um, I don't usually knit um, cables ever, but I do sometimes. I know how to do it. It was the first um, major technique that I learned how to do. I learned to admit knit cables when I was like um, nine. I just like I had this book called Kids Knitting by Melanie Fallock, which is a great book if you have a kid who wants to learn how to knit. It's just so colorful and fun. Um, and I had that book and it had like these beanbag projects and different stitch patterns like basket weave and seed stitch. And I tried all of them just for fun. Like I made like little squares just to try out stitch patterns. Cause when, especially when I was a little kid, I was or little like 10, 12. I was much more of a process knitter than a product knitter. Now I'm kind of, well, I'm definitely both. I knit because it really, I noticed that if I'm like on Zoom or something, I just yawn and yawn and yawn unless I'm knitting or even just in person, like at work, I will yawn. And if I'm knitting, I don't yawn. Like I'm not tired. It's just like something to, that I'm moving my body like in this little way that just kind of like wakes up my brain just enough to pay, be able to pay attention and not to be tired. And that is a gift, let me tell you. If you can just knit like without looking, um, to be able to do that like during a Zoom meeting, if you don't have to take notes or something, like just so, it's so nice. Um, just for your brain to keep it active. Um, so this hat, uh, yeah, I, anyway, I taught myself how to knit cables because there was like the simple cable little beanbag square thing in this book. And I saw it and I was like, that is, I mean, I'd seen knitted cables before, but I was like, that must be really hard. So I like, read the instructions and it was like, get a small needle, you know, like a, a double pointed needle or a cable needle and they show you what it looks like. And I found one in my mom's knitting bag and I said, let's go for it. And I did, I just followed the instructions and it was, it was clear, you know, cables, cable instructions are clear. Like in a key, it'll be like three slash three RC. This is a symbol, slip three stitches. <laughs> See, right cable would mean it's going 
towards the right. So th slip three stitches, two cable needle, hold in back of work, knit three stitches, knit three stitches off cable needle. Like when you're nine and you see that, you just do, I mean, you just try it. Like, I don't know, I didn't think too hard about it and I tried it and I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> it's a braid. <laughs> like blew my mind, it blew my mind. So my first ever sweater was a big cable to iron sweater um, that was seamed and has a couple of errors and weird things that I did. Um, but it took ages, it took months. Um, but I, eventually I would like to knit some more cabled sweaters. Especially I have some like Durer Natura yarn, Gilead. Um, I would like to make a cabled sweater with this. I have five balls of this forest, for forêt. Um, excuse my French accent. I am Canadian, but uh, I don't really use my French very often. Um, or like with my Brooklyn tweet, I have like a bunch of, I have a sweater quantity of shelter and button jar. I've actually never knit with shelter. Well, with I've knit like occasionally like a stripe of something in shelter. I have knit a sweater in loft and it is gorgeous. I um, ended up giving it to my mom because uh, the style was really boxy and kind of cropped and that is just like her style. Like she'll wear it over a collared shirt and it looks so good. Um, so yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, the, anyway, um, I like cables, but I find that they take a long time. And because I've knit Fair Isle so much, it's just really satisfying because of how quick it goes. Um, so I'm just trying to like do cables once in a while to kind of keep myself interested in them and not to like be, you know, I'm not afraid of cables. It's just like, I'm just like, oh, this takes so long. Um, I can do some cables without a cable needle, depending on the yarn. I wouldn't do that with a superwash yarn unless it was like a two by two cable. I definitely would not do a three by three cable with a mohair like this with a, you know, so I'm using a cable needle for these. But this is a good kind of gateway hat back into cables because you only do a cable like once every five rounds and there's only three cable rounds total in the whole hat. Um, and it's just so, uh, I want to say yummy. It is, but like, that's not as descriptive as I should be. So I've knit a lot. Um, I'm just going to grab a sweater here so you can see. You've seen this before if you've seen my channel, but this was the first time I knit with wool and mohair together. My first love note. First of, I don't know, I've knit like eight love notes now. There's another love note right in that bag. The fiery red one that I, these are the, those are the only two I kept. Um, I knit with wool and mohair a lot. Um, so, you know, I love the texture, but I've only ever knit with like either a single ply, 100% merino superwash and the mohair silk, or I've done one, I did one sweater with, um, well, I did a couple with like a silk merino blend for the single, but it's basically the same thing. There's just more yards on it. And then I did one of these sweaters with a uh, four ply, 100% merino. It's a little stronger. I, it's basically the same thing. Um, the mohair um, silk helps this A from stretching too much out of shape and it really helps it from pilling which I have always been impressed with because there is a mohair halo but it's like I'm just gonna put this here um, but it's like the halo somehow prevents the pilling and I have some single ply um, I have one in particular single ply um, fingering weight merino sweater that's just stretched out of shape and pills like crazy and it has to be shaved like every time I wear it and then washing it is a nightmare. You do have to be careful when you wash a sweater like this that it doesn't stretch it too far out of shape when it's wet, but you need to obviously wash it to open up the lace and to let the yarn relax. Um, so I've never knit, that's just all to say, with like what you would, like a a, a, a more natural, <laughs> um, non-superwash under-processed wool um, with mohair. I have, I've seen, I mean, I, I follow the Woolly Thistle. Um, I work with them. I love, I love that. Um, I love the Woolly Thistle. I promote them partially because I work for them. I do some basically freelance work with them, but also because I just think it's like the most fabulous store in the world. Um, it's like free yarn. It's just the most fabulous idea. Like you can't get some of this yarn at all unless you go to the, the Outer Hebrides. Like Corrine is just a wizard getting that yarn over here. And, um, and it is a gift to the American knitting community to be able to have this yarn, and I think they've really had, you know, created this renaissance of, um, of like using more rustic, rustic, um, woolly wool, let's call it woolly wool, of using people getting really into woolly wool. Like, again, I have my whole Shetland corner. This is all inspired by the woolly thistle. 
it's so good. Um, and some of those yarns you can get from a lot of suppliers in the US, but some of them you can't. Like Rama Fennel Garn, there's probably like, well, there's probably more than I think, but I only know of like two or three places where you can get this. Anyway, Karine has been knitting a sweater with this combination because she did the vanilla sweater in Rama and now they're doing one with, um, with Plum. Uh, and oh, it just looks so gorgeous. I absolutely am gonna have to do that. Um, one of these days. I have a lot of mohair. Um, I dye my own mohair most of the time because mohair silk is really expensive if you buy it hand dyed or from a company, but I get it when I, um, when I am dyeing yarn, it's wholesale and it's much more economical for me, um, especially because I knit a lot. Um, so yeah, I, I'll probably dye my own um, and get some Rama to go with it. And maybe I'll try the plum. I'm really enjoying this plum. And this is this has got nylon instead of silk, so that's a little a little better for your wallet um, if you're if you're curious. Um, so nice, oh my gosh! Um, it's just like the softness. So I really just do think that works. Um, one thing you could also do, I don't have any um, biche bouche mohair here. Um, I mean, I've knit with it before, but it's like in my mohair bag. Biche bouche, um, le petit lamb's wool. I have a bunch of these blue. I'm thinking about getting the very light blue mohair biche bouche and doing a, a kind of vanilla thing in that. I have a, I, I got this at Espace Trico about two years ago, I think. Um, and I got five of these and then one, um, what is it? Yeah, that one. Ah, don't fall out. Oh, that's why it was like, it's not together. I got one of the, this is dark blue turquoise and this is very light blue. Um, I got this because I was like making a lot of yoke sweaters at the time and I was like, I'll make a yoke sweater. But now I'm like, what if I just like did my cuffs in this dark blue or something? Yeah, I might have to do that. Might have to do that. What a hardship. Um, dye some really light blue mohair or maybe get it. Um, yeah, from, from someone. Uh, but I would, I think that I would like to do something like a woolly wool, a woollier wool. I would also recommend knitting a love note sweater in that. I bet it would be really gorgeous. Um, so if you are are thinking about that, Maggie at the Woolly Hustle and I were talking about like what yarns you could, like woolly or wools, you could do a love note sweater in. She was like, well, Biche Bouche has the mohair. I was like, oh yeah, that's smart. Cause I was thinking Briggs and Little Sport <laughs> for the base or La Lichen and Lace base and you know, Rama Plum or something. And it's like Biche Bouche. If you want, um, if you want a, really a coordinating like the same kind of color, the it's the it's the biche bouche because they get the mohair and the and the lamb's wool in the same colors. Mm, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe one of us will have to knit in lichen and lace, and one of us will have to knit in uh, in, uh, in the biche bouche, and we gotta just you know compare notes, see what happens. Uh, yeah, twist my arm to knit another love note. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see. Um, but I, I am enjoying this so much, the selection box knitting, but I want to make it last. You know, it's like the selection, it's like your chocolate, you got to make it last. So I'm really only working on this for an hour a day and I've only done three days and I have done most of the hat. Um, so yeah, I will, I will be showing, I'll be doing a series of, you know, what did I do with my selection box with this yarn? Um, because, uh, lots of people have it or will be interested in getting the yarn if, um, you know, because the Woolly Thistle sells a lot of this yarn. Some of it is exclusive to the selection box occasionally, but um, but a lot of it is is not. And I think I'm mostly going to be knitting hats. Um, I'm going to knit a hat with the Marie Wallen. I'm going to knit the the Pea Vine by Gudrun Johnston, um, which is the re one of the recommended patterns on the card. Um, and I just love that pattern. It's so gorgeous. Um, and then I'm probably going to knit a Aisling hat with the... Um, like the Black Isle DK. My mom loves the Aisling hat. It's um, it's like a DK hat that has this kind of like very simple cable and like garter panels around. And it just has, it has a double brim where you like fold it and then knit into the cast on edge. Um, and she's got a really pretty pom pom on the top. And she knit that in a Merino DK. Um, and the gauge is tight enough that it didn't like stretch out of shape, but I think I'm gonna try it with the wooly, woolier wool because uh, we all know where uh, where my heart really lies. Um, that's, yeah, I really prefer, just for every reason, the woolier wool. Um, but again, I don't, 
it doesn't bother me on my head on my skin so yeah so that's gonna be next and um I am gonna knit a hap um so last year and this year the the box has come with um daughter of a shepherd heritage which is this like beautiful Hebridean black it's like naturally it's like naturally really really dark brown yarn in four ply um and it's super high yardage worsted spun oh my gosh and I think I'm gonna make a bell braid hap with that because I have a bunch left over from um, the skein I had got last year, which I used, if you've seen my Yoki Doki video, um, I used that uh, uh, for part of the color work, which I knit the Yoki Doki and Jagger Spun, also came in the selection box. Um, yeah, I have a, so my, the color I got in the selection box was teal of Jagger Spun, and I have, I'm gonna have a bunch of the smoke, the light gray color left over after my sweater is done, because I'm on the second sleeve finally now. <laughs> That's my zoom knitting because I don't have to look um, and it's like back and forth sleeve. It makes the sleeve go faster if you're talking while you're knitting it. That's my opinion on vanilla knitting in general. Um, I, I say vanilla knitting for either social situations or zoom knitting. Um, and what was I saying? Oh, I'm gonna have some leftover with, so maybe I'll pair the, the teal color with the smoke because I thought it, they would be nice in color work. We'll see what happens. Maybe I'll make a hat with that. Um, but I am, I have, so I have like, I uh, probably 70%, maybe 75% of the first skein of the Hebridean yarn. Cause I just used it in the color work yoke. Um, and again, the yardage is so high on that cause it's such a fine yarn. Um, so I've got two, they probably don't, I, uh, cause they were probably from different years clips. So the color is probably not exactly the same cause it's just a natural sheep, um, sheep color. So I might have to alternate skeins, but I have almost two, almost two skeins of it. So I think I'm going to make a big, a big old hap shawl really excited maybe I'll make the Hansel hap like half or full depending on how much I gotta check yardage I gotta weigh it and see how much I have but um yeah I'm just like so excited to like get I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do a fast I'm gonna save it um gonna savor it um, but I'm really enjoying this hat I wanted something kind of quick to start me off and I really just love these colors and I was like I don't have anything in a gold like that and uh, probably gonna end up keeping a lot of the hats. Um, I have a couple of Fair Isle hats that I wear a lot, especially the blue one, white one that I made last year. The uh, the edited Katie's cap. Um, if you go way back to like episode eight or something, you can see that. Um, I'll link it down below in the show notes. But um, yeah, that I wear that a lot, but I would like a variety of hats to go with a variety of outfits. I have so many coats too. Um, I have a lot of work clothes, like fancier clothes, because when I was teaching undergraduates, I was like 25 and 26, and I didn't really feel like I felt like I needed to dress in really nice clothes so that they knew that I was in charge. Um, and that was, yeah, so that's pretty normal, I think. Um, so I have a lot of like really nice coats and clothes and bags that I got like mostly at like J. Crew Factory and Banana Republic Factory um, those couple of years. And my office is really casual. I mean, it's not really casual, like I wouldn't wear leggings to work, but most people wear jeans. Um, so, and for me, it's just most important that I can wear knitwear to work and I don't have to wear like a collared shirt with like a jacket every day. Um, but yeah, oh, I have this brown blazer that I got at a at a thrift store, in, well, not thrift store, like a secondhand, a, a Buffalo Exchange secondhand store. Buffalo Exchange is like a really nice, it's not like super fancy consignment, but it's like nicer consignment um, store. It's a chain. They have them everywhere. I've been to one in Albuquerque and I got this, I think it's Theory. It's either Theory or Eileen Fisher, my mom's two favorite <laughs> places to get her clothes. Um, I think it's Eileen Fisher actually. And it's like a felted wool, like a boiled wool blazer. And it's very stretchy and it's like a chocolate brown on the outside. It's not reversible, but the inside is like charcoal. So it's like chocolate brown on the outside and charcoal on the inside. And it's just like a really perfectly fitting, like stretchy kind of wool blazer with buttons. And it's the same color as my um, Fair Isle vest. And I think I could wear the vest underneath the jacket. My office is also cold. So this is, this is good. I'm so glad my office is cold because I wouldn't want to wear wool to work if it wasn't. Um, so in my cold office, maybe I'll wear that. Yeah, with, and, you know with my with my vest with my slip over that I made because I haven't worn that yet 
uh, very much um, and it's so comfortable and well fitting but again because I don't love the way the sleeves hang I could just cut them and like knit the like, knit the cuffs but um, because I don't love the way that it's like a cap sleeve I want to wear it underneath something like a blazer but then it's really nice because you don't have to worry about too much bulk on the arms so yeah maybe I'll wear that on Monday tomorrow that's tomorrow um but yeah this is my I'm just been blabbering about clothes you if you watch my channel you know that there's a lot of blabbering about whatever I'm whatever I talk myself into um so there it is there's my minted oh it's so cozy yeah I just I just need to knit maybe I'll knit a sweater out of these two colors oh yeah maybe mm. again I'm trying I'm trying not to buy yarn but I, I I need to make like a rule with myself like knit five sweaters then you can buy another sweater quantity like something like that um so we'll see mm, I really want to make one or have to, maybe I have to knit all of my mohair sweater yarn into sweaters before I can buy any more mohair um yeah I don't know but I really want one now mm. maybe with like a little contrasting I loved if you if you watch the last shopcast um the black friday hangover shopcast <laughs> i love that name uh the, the Korean was showing her uh her her whip the vanilla sweater mohair uh fluffy vanilla fluff i think is what she's gonna call it and she has a little pico neckline oh my gosh i was just like ah! need to make it of course so yeah i just filmed a bunch of videos in a row so now i need to start knitting um or like go outside I don't know. It's it's like I live in this really cool part of Baltimore and I don't really go outside. I mean, I do, like, but I go to work and I like haven't really been exploring. I've been to Baltimore a lot of times before I moved here, so I have I know a lot of places already, but like I'm like you got to spend the weekends going walking around and going to new places and finding cool places to eat and like I've been to all the yarn stores. Like that's not a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> the most important thing is done. <laughs> yeah, I think I've been to all the yarn stores. Maybe not. Well, anyway, I've been to most of the yarn stores in the area. Neighborhood Fiber Co., Lovely Yarns, Clover Hill Yarns. I've been to Wool Winders, which is in Annapolis. Um, there's also a Rockville location, um, which I've never been to, but um, Rockville's not super far from here, but it's probably like 40 minutes, so maybe longer. I'm not, because it's not, we're not on the DC belt, Beltway. You have to go all the way to the Beltway and then go over to Rockville, so anyway, yeah. When I was living in DC, I was closer to there. Okay, well, my roommate's gonna be home from Target soon. And she knows that I've, <laughs> she came in yesterday and I was like, sorry, I was filming. And she was like, oh, like, I'm so sorry. Like, I had to explain like, the, my other roommate found my YouTube channel and she was like showing all her friends. And I was like, oh, she, and she's not even the knitter. It was so cute. She's gonna become a knitter very soon. I, I guarantee it. Um, you can't live with two knitters, two like very, people who love knitting and not, that's my professional opinion. So we'll have to teach her. Anyway, I'm going to go knit for a while. <laughs> so thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye!